I'm Glenn Rose, and I'm going to talk a little bit today uh, about some lessons from my Jazz Blues for Ukulele book. What's the difference between Jazz Blues and Rock Blues? They're both in the 12-bar format. Rock Blues we call basic three-chord blues, or just basic blues. Jazz Blues uses jazz chords, and there's more of those chords. We have walk-downs and turnarounds that we don't find in the basic blues. But all of these new chords are made with just two hand shapes, and that's what we're going to look at in today's lesson. I'm going to start out on page 11 because that's where we first find the jazz chord shapes that are used in the rest of the book. The lessons before this talk about how simple chords evolve into these jazz chords and explain the 12-bar blues format. I've got a low G on my ukulele here today. I play with a low G whenever I'm playing blues or standards. If you have a high G on your ukulele, uh, that's fine. That's going to sound great. Here's the first of our two jazz chord shapes. It's called a dominant 13, or simply a 13 chord. We're going to see how this chord moves up and down the ukulele neck. Here's what it looks like. And here's what it sounds like. That's a C13. The sound of a dominant 13 chord. Uh, let's see how we make this chord. We're going to start by uh, building the chord on the third fret, and by that I mean we're going to put our index finger at the third fret, and then we're going to start adding a couple of notes. The first one's going to be right here on the fret, fourth fret, all by itself right there. Now you might recognize this as a C7, or C dominant 7. It indeed is. We're going to convert this C7 into a 13 chord by adding our ring finger right here on the fifth fret. So now we have these two fingers, fret 3 and fret 4, and the bar back here. Uh, uh, the bar, I refer to this as a bar because I'm an old guitar player, and guitar players call these bar chords. Ukulele players call them movable chords. They're both the same thing. So I'll often say uh, bar chord, and just so you know, we're talking about the same thing. So here's a C13 chord. It's a jazz chord. We can take this anywhere, because it is a movable chord. We can take it down here. It becomes B13, B flat 13, A13. Here we don't need our finger, because the nut of the ukulele is doing the work for us. C13. And this is going to be our starting place, because we're playing jazz blues in the key of C in the book. We only cover C in the book. We've got to start somewhere, and C is a great place to do it. Now, as I mentioned before, we only need two chord shapes to begin playing jazz blues chord progressions. And here's the second of those shapes. It's a dominant nine chord, or simply called a nine chord, and we're going to see how this chord moves up and down the neck as well. Here's what the nine chord shape looks like, and here's what it sounds like. That's the sound of a dominant nine chord, or a nine chord. Now let's see how this is made. We're going to uh, start it here on fret 2, put our index finger here, and then three fingers here on the third fret. So we've got these three covered, and this one covered. Now depending on what's comfortable for you and the size of your hand, uh, often it's made like this. You can lay down actually two bars. This, this becomes a bar here with your index finger on the second fret. Even though it's only covering this finger, sometimes it's easy just to grab it like this, then this finger makes a second bar with these three strings here instead of playing them like this. So you'll see me often when I'm playing, I'll, I'll, I'll do it this way sometimes, and I'll do it this way sometimes. And what that's all about is this wears the hand out. You're just going to get a lot of uh, fatigue in the middle of your hand and on your wrist by, by holding it like this. Um, it's easy to grab it that way, but it also wears out the hand. So I'll often go back to this because it takes away all of that tension when you use every finger to play it. But depending on the size of your hand, you may find, and the strength, you may find that this is a better way to play it for you. So just experiment as you will. This is called an F9 chord in this position. And that's the second chord we're going to use in our jazz chord blues progression. Sounds like that. Now we can take it anywhere, just as we did before. We take it here, it's E9. Here it's E flat 9. I'll make it the other way, so here's F9, E9, E flat 9.
And now if you have one of my other books, Jazzy Ukulele, you'll probably recognize that both of these chords are the middle chord found in each of the major jazz patterns. Now let's put it all together with a lesson on page 11 and find out how our jazz chords sound in basic three chord blues. Now basic three chord blues is usually made with simple chords or rock chords, but we're going to make this three chord blues with jazz chords and it's going to give us a definite jazz twist and bring a cooler sound to basic blues. Now we're in our 12 bar format so we have 12 bars if we count them here. Bar 1 is going to be C13, bar 2 F9, bar 3 and 4 are going to be C13. Now bars 5 and 6 we're playing F9 on both bars. Bar 7 and 8 we're playing C13. On bar 9 we're playing a G9. It's made with the same chord formation the same uh, hand shape as F9. But we're up here on G9, then bar 10 goes to F9, bar 11 to C13. Bar 12 goes to G9 when we go back to the beginning, and it always goes back to the beginning except for when the whole song ends. So that's why this is in parentheses. It's showing that this G9 is only played when it returns, and it often returns. Returns every time except the last time. The last time we just ignore that uh, G9 and play C13 twice. I'm going to play a very simple but fun swing groove that's a favorite with swing guitar players, in our case swing ukulele. It's every beat is a downbeat. And I'm cutting this downbeat every time by squeezing and letting up my hand so it's squeeze, let up, squeeze, let up, like that. So if I just held it down, if I put pressure on, it's going to sound like that. But when I squeeze and let up, squeeze and let up, it cuts the beat, the uh, ringing off, and creates a more insistent effect on our four beats to the bar. So if I just laid my hands in position here and went down, I would have this percussive effect. And when I want a sound, I'd squeeze. So squeeze, let up, squeeze, let up, squeeze, let up. Okay, here we go. I'm going to walk through the progression and count the bars as we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Going to F9, 5, 2, 3, 4, 6, going to C, 8, two. going to G9, 9, 2, 3, 4, 10, 2, 3, 4, 11, 2, 3, 4, 12, 2, 3, 4. So this is what basic blues sounds like when we use jazz chords instead of simple rock chords. We can take any blues song we know and put these jazz chords to it and it'll give it a definite cooler jazz sound. Any tempo you want in a variety of grooves. I'll try to get into more tempos and different grooves in future videos. You can also write your own blues songs. That's a lot of fun and I'll try to cover that in uh, future videos as well. Uh, let me just take a song that's familiar and, and put it to our progression here about in the same tempo about uh, I'm going to Kansas City, Kansas City here I come City, Kansas City, here I come. Mm, they got some crazy little women there. I'm gonna get me one. That's all we have time for in today's session. We've covered the two basic hand shapes that are used to make the jazz chords that are found in the rest of our lessons. The second half of the book gets into the jazz blues progression that jazz players use when they get together to jam. It's got a jazz walk down and jazz turnaround that aren't found in basic blues. So more chords, but still made with just these two hand positions. So it really, uh, it's worth it to really get familiar with these two hand positions because we can do an awful lot with them. Order the book as an ebook that will go directly to your computer, no matter where you are in the world, at www.jazzyukulele.com. <laughs>